What's up, everybody? It's Bro Man. Uh, <clears throat> I wanted to make a video to talk a little bit more about uh, what's going on in Forsaken, uh, breaking down the different things that are inside of, uh, you know, Forsaken, the seasonal stuff, the annual pass, and point out some things, some highlights about Destiny's future that I actually think are really exciting. So we're going to start with this graphic. Uh, this is on Bungie.net. You can check it out right now. You can just go there and explore this week's TWAB. Um, they break down what is in what is in every section. So as, as you know, in the ongoing conversation or hopefully dead conversation about cost, we have, you know, these statements. So um, the thing I want to point out is the thing in the middle and it says seasons. Everyone who owns Destiny 2 gets everything that's involved in seasons, which includes quality life updates, sandbox changes, seasonal and special events, seasonal rewards and all new crucible maps, all new crucible modes. So if you own Destiny, you get that, period. You don't have to buy shit. Um, and then they highlight what's in the annual pass and what's in Forsaken. Forsaken, there's a new story, new destination, Tangled Shore, new endgame destination, Dreaming City, uh, new levels, new power, new subclasses, paths, and supers. That is in the DLC. You have to buy the DLC. New PvE, PvP game mode, Gambit, new raid, new rewards, new legendary gear, new exotic gear, new triumphs to collect, and new lore to discover. Which is all pretty much what we expected from the, you know, information that they had already released. And then we have on the other side, the annual pass, which is three content releases, premium content releases, Black Armory in the winter, Joker's Wild in the spring and Penumbra in the summer. This includes more pinnacle activities, which I think you need to look further down the list to really understand what this is. Um, because later it says more raid layers. So pinnacle activity in Bungie's definition is an activity that you do in Destiny um, at the height of your power. So a pinnacle activity right now that is kind of maybe we'll say like a non sequitur would be escalation protocol. Maybe before they adjusted it, that would be a pinnacle activity. You need to have maximum power to complete it. So new pinnacle activities, more weapon and armor, new and returning exotics more end game challenges, more raid layers, unique vanity rewards, more triumphs to collect <clears throat> and more lore to discover. So I know immediately some of you hear the word raid layer and it makes you super angry in that. Um, I'm always hopeful that the raid layers, I like the raid layer system. The fact that we're going to be getting three raid layers inside of a year instead of just two is cool. Um, and we have to see more about what's going down with all these before we know exactly how to judge them <clears throat> i given how diverse the naming is black armory jokers wild and penumbra of uh you know given how diverse the naming is for these content drops it kind of makes me think that they might not be directly related to the original raid um you know maybe our experience with raiding and raid layers is different now than it was for all the first year of Destiny 2 where everything was on the Leviathan and there was a story to tell of us becoming best buddies with Callus. Callus is now out of the equation. We've saved his ship from the Armada, so now we have new stories to tell. That's kind of the way that I would interpret that. Um, I'm really excited about the, the potential. Um, you know, a lot of people have brought up the Black Armory, which makes people think of the Black Spindle, so like maybe there's connections there. Joker's Wild sounds like it's going to be maybe related to Cade and a lot of the other things. And Penumbra really feels like uh, a shadow based dark event that's probably going to be the resurgence of the Hive um, and the Taken, which I am really looking forward to because I love the lore behind the Hive and the Taken. Um, they've got some more stuff about the Crucible Labs and things inside the TWAB, but this isn't just about the TWAB. This is a discussion of, of what I am excited about. Um, and looking forward to and forsaken. So I wanted to cover that. Um, and then I wanted to dive a little bit more into like what the forsaken is going to be bringing to the game from my perspective, um, not just as a streamer, but as someone who enjoys games. We haven't really taken time to sit down and, and talk about this on uh, YouTube. We've talked about it on stream a whole bunch. Um, so now that we have that framework, let's move forward. Um, I am really excited that the fact that uh, I'm really excited about the reality of Bungie's focus on this DLC. There's one word that kept coming up throughout the entire Vidoc, and that word is hobby. 
um, the hobby of destiny is returning. So one of the things, uh, and, and I would like to, uh, if you're someone who enjoys like playing destiny, you would be considered in this conversation, a destiny hobbyist. I love that they chose that word because it doesn't delineate hardcore and casual because casual people like hardcore challenges and hardcore people like to chill and not sweat their face off every time, you know, they boot up a match in a game. Uh, so the real the real situation in in all of this that I'm really excited about is that the hobby of Destiny is returning. They're looking to create a game that you want to boot up every day and play uh, in Destiny one. That hobby was really easily defined. That hobby was uh, especially in vanilla. You needed to boot up. You had to check all the boxes so you could level your gear. Uh, you know, so you do your bounties every day, you do whatever, and then maybe you'd screw around in P PvP to try and get some more experience. Uh, and then you would go farm your destination materials. And then, you know, at that point, it's about four or five hours later and you're done. Um, that sort of gameplay loop or that experience is really what drove a lot of people to fall in love with Destiny. And I think that that is the kind of magic they're trying to recapture the return of the hobby. What are some other things that you would consider a hobby, you know, in Destiny 1? You know, you'd have your weekly raiding experiences, your nightfalls, um, you know, your heroic strikes, you're, you're screwing around, you're hunting for secrets. Uh, all of this stuff wasn't necessarily driven from a continuous flow of content. It's not like Destiny 1 vanilla had new updates every single week. But because there was so much depth in the content, you had to kind of plan your week out. Like if you got a full set of raid gear and you wanted to be ready for the raid that week, you had to level that shit up. Uh, and it might take you seven days of bounties to level up an exotic weapon. It might take you a month of of grinding to get enough fragments in order to perfect your Vex Mythoclast. And the things that I liked about that, um, the things that I liked about that in particular was that it made everything f you gave you ownership, right? Ownership in real life is derived from how much you invest in something. So like a home, you buy a home, it becomes your house, um, but it doesn't really feel like it's yours until maybe you paint the walls, you bring in some pieces of furniture, whatever. You make it your own by investing more time into the thing that you already own. This was something that Destiny 1 Vanilla really did pretty well and this isn't like rose colored goggles like I realized there was a lot of fucking investment issues as well but that time investment loop was there and it was there through most of Destiny 1's history Destiny 2 came out and the investment loop went away there's no perfect roles to grind for so one of the things in Destiny 1 that kept you invested was man I need to get a perfect role on you know, like there's no such thing as a perfect role on your uh, <laughs> on your better devils. There's nothing different between your first and last better devils. But in Destiny 1, you maybe there would have been a perfect God role for the better devils. Maybe you needed to have triple type and outlaw or something like that. These these are the things um, that need to come back in Destiny 2. And with, you know, the announcement that they're going to have random roles that means you know in my mind it means there's going to be a lot more content content depth um to everything that comes out uh which is why i think like you know if you had a knee-jerk reaction that said man i don't know how i feel about you know this light level change or i don't know how i feel about this new gear system or i don't know how i feel about the fact that they're not introducing like a billion strikes into into you know the universe um I think that the focus should be on how much depth they have the potential to introduce. Um, I'm always hopeful when companies focus on depth because that's what keeps players engaged, um, depth and engagement. And so you can have a very minimal amount of content, like let's say Mario, but the amount of time you can invest into Mario is immense because there's a lot of mastery behind it. There's a lot of like second level gameplay they can go into playing Super Mario, which is why people still play it, speedrun it to this day, because they want to master the game. And mastering Destiny 2 doesn't really feel like a task that feels special. Um, but with the introduction of hobbies, random roles, everything that they're bringing to the table, I really do feel like 
you know, everything is on the right path. I'm excited for what's next in the Destiny universe. Um, and I said this on stream, and I'll, I'll say it here on YouTube just to sort of, I guess, put it on, <laughs> put it, put it in the universe permanently. I, I am so excited about Forsaken. It's the first time I felt truly optimistic about everything I was seeing in the Destiny world since I saw Vanilla Destiny for the first time. Um, it really is going to be an exciting experience based off of what I can see. Um, obviously, a lot of this can change. Obviously, we've been let down before and, and all of that stuff. And I, I get it. But for me, um, you know, the bones, the framework of what I loved about Destiny is returning. Um, and n not for nothing, this journey to sort of embrace everyone and and bring in the casual nature of the game has definitely taught some lessons. Like there's definitely some things about Destiny 2 that are I, <sighs> improvements systems wise over the old stuff, uh, but things that we're still looking for, you know, like we're still looking for integrated matchmaking, looking for raid type stuff. We're still looking for bigger end game experiences and things like that. But, you know, the introduction of bigger characters, different weapon types, the weapon foundry system is really neat. Unfortunately, it went unexplored heavily. But, you know, there's there's some progressions that were made in Destiny 2, not necessarily on the gameplay side, uh, but, you know, on design and things like that. So I am, you know, I'm I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that everything's going to turn out OK, um, you know, and for the first time, it's not. G Willy Willikers, I sure hope it works out. It's this looks like a good framework. You know, every other DLC that got launched, even going even to the Taken King, like it looked awesome, but I always had concerns. This is the first time where I'm like, I don't really have a lot of concerns. I'm just kind of excited and it feels good. So those are my I guess back and all the way at the beginning, those are my thoughts on on Destiny 2's, you know, Forsaken launch. That's everything that's happening. You know, that's kind of my full discussion about my thoughts on what's next for Destiny. Um, I'm going to try and do update vids on on this subject because I think a state of Destiny video is kind of important to do, um, especially when we have people running around being mad because I don't like people being mad. I just want everyone to be happy. And I think being happy comes from understanding each other. Um, whether you agree or disagree, understanding is key. Um, so I am probably going to keep doing that. Uh, thanks for listening today. Uh, I hope you liked it. If you did, uh, share it with a bud. You can subscribe if you want. You can leave a comment if you want. It's all on you. But the only thing I really want you to do is share this with somebody. Start a conversation. Um, what you know? Share share your thoughts. Talk to each other about what you do and don't like about what's going on in Destiny. Because that's the only way that the game gets better, and that's the way we become a community again. And I'm excited about it. I'll talk to y'all next time. Peace.